Right, Dougal, come on, you can't sit watching television all night. It's a big waste. Chewing gum for the eyes. Uh, no, thanks, Ted. <laughs> anyway, I've got these crisps here. Look, Ted, this is what I do. I get a cheese and onion one and a salt and vinegar one and I eat them in the same go. <laughs> that leak is getting worse, Dougal. I think we'll have to move himself and put that bucket under it. Right, fair enough, Ted. I'm a happy camper! <laughs> God almighty, that's going to cost a fortune to fix. Where are we going to get the money? Think, Dougal, how can we raise some money? Hmm. Yes, mm. I know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so, Ted. Yes! <laughs> but now, wait, I'm not sure. <laughs> what? I mean, it is a big step, and uh, where are we going to get the guns? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, wait a minute now. Actually, I, I might have been thinking about something different. <laughs> you thought we were going to rob a bank, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> well, Drew, this isn't a Bruce Willis film. I was thinking more along the lines of a raffle. What do we have as a prize, though? You've got me there, Ted. And I've been looking up the records, and the island hasn't been given anything to raffle since those two bags of coal in 1964. Uh, I think we're entitled, uh, under the rules of the diocese... <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Your Grace. Yes, thanks again. Uh, all right. Uh, bye, Bishop Brennan. Bye. No luck, then. <laughs> Lots of luck, Dougal. We're being given a car. A car? That's a brilliant prize, Ted. Oh, it's not that unusual. Father Finnegan got one last year. You know him, don't you, Dougal? The dancing priest. Dances for peace. Oh, yeah. Is he still going? Oh, yes, indeed. He danced across America last year. New York to Los Angeles. He was mugged about once every 15 miles. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'll just tap it the other way. It's no use, Ted. You'll never get it absolutely right. <laughs> now, what are we going to do? We could run away. <sighs> no, they'll just find us again. They always do. All right. All right. <laughs> what about that other fellow that has the car? Uh, the dancing priest? Finnegan! Yes, and it'll be the same type of car and everything. How could we get him to give it to us? Maybe... Maybe we could just get a lend of it. Ah, but when somebody wins it in the raffle, they won't want to give it back. Now, Dougal, this is going to sound very, very immoral, but um, stay with me. <laughs> what if... What if we organised the raffle so that we won it? Then we could bring the car back. Oh, oh! that'd be terribly wrong, Ted. I don't think we should do that. It wouldn't be cheating, really. It would just, it would just be a case of structuring the raffle in such a way that the return comes to the benefactors rather than the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Fair enough, then, Ted. I'll fill the hat with a load of tickets, all with the same number on them, say, 11. Eleven. Two ones. Uh, that's easy to remember, Ted. And then when I'm doing the draw, we'll make sure that you have that number. Right. So we won't have to cheat at all. <laughs> well, that's actually how we're cheating, Dougal. Oh, right. Oh, oh, OK. OK, so let me get this straight. You'll be wearing the hat. <laughs> no, no, I, I won't be wearing any hats. The tickets will be in the hat. Gotcha. But you'll put on the hat to give me the signal. I won't be giving you any signals, Dougal. I'll just pull out your ticket and you say, that's my number, and come up and collect a prize. There's a prize, Ted! What is it? <laughs> the car! Oh, all right, Jack. Yeah. Do you know what this is a bit like? It's a bit like The Sting, and I'm Robert Redford, and you're Paul Newman. That <laughs> <laughs> little woman. Now, I wonder where Jack's got to. Oh, he's with Father Purcell. Oh, God, I better go and rescue him. He'll be going mad. No, he's fine. They're just having a chat. But Dougal Purcell's the most boring priest in the world. <laughs> he was working in Nigeria a few years ago, and he woke up one morning to find that everyone in the village had had enough of him and gone off in a big boat. It sank after a mile and they were eaten by alligators. <laughs> anyway, I better go. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, and the winning number is... Number 11. <laughs> number 11. <laughs> number 11. If anyone has that number, will they come up on stage? What's that you say, Father McGuire? You have the winning number. What? Oh, <laughs> let's have a big round of applause for our very own Father Dougal McGuire. <laughs> God almighty, Dougal. What are you doing? Sorry, Ted. I, I was looking at the ticket upside down. <laughs> well, congratulations to Father Dougal. Anyway, what a fantastic evening we've had. <laughs> we've raised enough money to repair the roof, and we've had a great time. So let me just thank you all now for coming along and ask you to stand for our national anthem. <laughs> Way, you know, uh, I, I was in the AA there, you know, for a while, and 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 uh, the insurance was very expensive. I, All I, right. I, I had to crash the car just to get the money back, you know. <laughs> and, and, and then they had witnesses who said they'd seen me steer it towards the wall, you know. There, there was talk of me going to jail for a while. Ah, uh, it's yourself. What's up, Ted? It's Father Finnegan. He's had a heart attack. No. Are there any more chipsticks? <laughs> Does that mean we can keep the carrot head? Dougal, that's a terrible thing to say. The man is just... Oh, wait a second, you're right, we can! It's not that bad, Ted. Yes, God, I thought it'd be much worse than that. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> Dougal, how is this not that bad? <laughs> oh, well, at least you still have the raffle money for the roof. <sighs> God, I'm not reading that book anymore. It's very scary altogether, Ted. Ted. Yes, what? <clears throat> Did you ever see a ghost? Well, Dougal, I'll tell you something happened to me once. <clears throat> It was years ago. I was staying with my great aunt in her house in Connemara, <laughs> which is a big house miles from anywhere. Apparently, during the Great Famine, a cruel landlord and his beautiful daughter used to live there. The story is that he forbade the daughter from marrying a young soldier. It broke her heart, and in her despair, she hung herself in her bedroom. The room that I was staying in was that very bedroom. I remember it was icy cold and lit by a single candle. I was drifting off to sleep when suddenly I heard a strange creaking noise from the far corner of the room. Was it a ghost? No. <laughs> so, no, I've never seen a ghost. <laughs> I saw one. Really? Yes. It was a man, all dressed in black. And I came down one night for a glass of milk. And he was just sitting there in front of the television, just there, right? <laughs> it was weird. And, you know, he had this strange kind of grey hair, even though he wasn't very old. Now, Dougal, Dougal, um, could this have been me at all? <laughs> ah. <sighs> For pity's sake. It's working now, Ted. <laughs> it's broken again. Maybe it only works when my head is in it. <laughs> Ted, we should call the plumber. No, no, I don't want to get them involved. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd be too embarrassed to tell them how I broke it in the first place, you know, trying to give it an extra hard flush. <laughs> well, now, Ted, I have to say it was fine for me. It was a good, powerful flush, I thought. Bloody hell. Good news, Ted. No. <laughs> very, very bad news. It's the Holy Stone of Clonrickert. They're going to upgrade it to a Class Two relic. Great! No, it's not great. It means they'll be sending over a few bishops to do a ceremony. And you know what they're like. We'll have to be on our best behaviour. I thought there was something up with the Holy Stone, all right. Wasn't someone cured there? No, someone was lured there. <laughs> 
Paddy Short. And then those fellas started to beat him with the sticks. Oh, that was it, yeah. <laughs> ah, come on, Ted, cheer up. It may never happen. Well, it is happening. They're definitely coming. All oh, right, yeah. But who cares anyway? I mean, they come in, they strip down the wallpaper, they fumigate the place and they're gone. What's so bad about that? <laughs> Dougal, they're bishops. All oh, right, yes. <laughs> Dougal, what is this confusion you have about bishops? Do you actually understand what they actually do? <laughs> Nothing to do with fumigating houses or anything like that at all. <laughs> uh, have you got that? Got it. Anyway, Ted, let's play a game. Get your mind off it. Chess or buckaroo? Uh, <laughs> actually, I wouldn't mind a game of the old chess today myself. Really? Oh. No, only joking, Ted. Buckaroo. Okay. <laughs> but only if you're ready for a good trashing. Dougal, you've never actually beaten me, ever. All right, yeah. Now, Dougal, this is crucial. Listen to me, all right? All right, Ted. These bishops are very important. I'll stay around you all the time, just in case. So you don't say anything to them that you're not supposed to say to them. Like what? <laughs> like what you said to Bishop Lindsay when he asked me where I was when Kennedy was shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, you overreacted slightly there. He wasn't accusing me of anything. <laughs> and then we have the problem with Jack. Couldn't we just hide him for a couple of days? <laughs> no, they'd hear him shouting, Girls! <laughs> Maybe we could train Jack to say something apart from drink or feck or girls, like, like, like a dog and that's life a few years ago. <laughs> Dougal, Father Jack may be bad, but he's not a dog. <laughs> there he is now. He probably wants to go out. Uh, Mrs Doyle, uh, you left the cooker on. All right, Father, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> No sign of them yet, Ted. <clears throat> Dougal, uh, Dougal, uh, they're here. <laughs> Sorry about that, Bishop O'Neill. Uh, you were saying? Uh, yes, very simple ceremony. We'll just need a little incense. Oh, incense? <laughs> I don't know if we. Uh, Dougal, do you know if we have any incense? <laughs> there was a spider in the bath last night. <laughs> No, Dougal. Incense. Incense. All oh, right, yes. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> do you remember when we ran out of incense and uh, we used the <clears throat> window eating? <clears throat> <laughs> well, um, I'm sure we can find some. Oh! oh! Are you all right, Your Grace? Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I, I had a minor heart attack last year. I uh, have to take it easy. I... Got a bit of a fright there. Uh, right. <laughs> it's not a problem, though. But if you could uh, just give us a bit of a warning when you're going to do anything sudden. <laughs> Dougal, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, Ted. I just remembered Aliens is on after the news. <laughs> Dougal, for God's sake. I'm sorry, Bishop Jordan. Did you not hear what he's saying about his heart? I know. It's just, it's the director's cut. Come on, everyone. Let's all have a big lad's night in. Do them. Do them just, just shut up. <laughs> a heart attack. <laughs> That's rare enough these days. <laughs> there were certainly a lot of prayers said for Bishop Jordan. I don't Jordan know why we can't look at there. aliens. Dougal, Bishop O'Neill is speaking. But they'd love it, Ted. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> Bishops love sci-fi. Dougal, we are not watching aliens! So, Father... Do you ever have any doubts about the religious life? Is your faith ever tested? <laughs> Anything you've been worried about? Any doubts you've been having about any aspects of belief? Anything like that? Well, you know the way God made us all, right? And uh, he he's looking down at us from heaven and everything. Uh -huh. And then his son came down and saved everyone and all that. Yes. And when we die, we're all going to go to heaven. Yes. What about it? Well, that's the bit I've trouble with. <laughs> that is the key. So, if God has existed forever, you know, what, what did he do in his spare time, like, before he made the earth and everything, you know? Well, 
We all have doubts. And what about when you weren't allowed to eat meat on Fridays? Uh, how come that's all right now, but it, it wasn't back then? I mean, did the people who ate meat on Fridays back then, did they all go to hell or what? I mean, it's mad! <laughs> He's not bothering you, is he? No. No, it's fascinating. <laughs> I hope you had a nice chat. <laughs> oh, it was great. I think I reached some very interesting conclusions. Oh, uh, about what exactly? Well, it's nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> what is? Religion. Well, think about it. Very little evidence. Blind faith, that's all we have to go on. There's not a shred of proof anywhere. Nothing. Aliens? Now, there's something that might just be possible. <laughs> Everlasting life? Big demons sticking red-hot pokers up your ass for all eternity? <laughs> I don't think so. The whole religion thing, I just don't buy it. I've been struggling with my conscience for some time now, but Father Maguire was the first man to spell it out for me in black and white. Oh, Dougal, what have you been up to? <laughs> this man. <laughs> this man! <laughs> Treasure him, Father Crilly. He has wisdom far beyond his years. Thanks very much. Ah, uh, me too, Ted. It's great to take a day off every now and again. It shouldn't be just work, work, work now, should it? Yes, it's not as if everybody's going to go and join some mad religious cult just because we go out for a picnic for a few hours. God, Ted, I heard about those cults. Everyone dressing in black and saying our Lord's going to come back and judge us all. <laughs> no. No, Dougal, th th that's us. That's Catholicism. <laughs> all right, right. Oh, I love a sandwich from time to time. It doesn't matter what flavour it is, just as long as it isn't egg, because you know how much I hate egg, Mrs Doyle. God, <laughs> even the smell of them brings me out in a terrible rash. I tell you, I wouldn't eat an egg sandwich if you paid me. They're horrible, stinking, smelly things, as I told you before. Do you remember me telling you earlier, Mrs Doyle, anything except egg, and how I wanted anything at all, just as long as it wasn't egg. They're egg, aren't they, Mrs Doyle? Yes. <laughs> Great. I'll eat them, Mrs Doyle. I love egg. Sometimes I think I like egg so much that one day I'm going to turn into a big, giant egg. <laughs> I think that process has already begun. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, so, ready? Oh, ready as I'll ever be, Ted. I don't think I've ever looked forward to anything as much as I've looked forward to this picnic. Right, so? <laughs> oh, wait, Ted, uh, I just remembered. I can't go. <laughs> Here, do you want one? I know, thanks, Father Lennon. What time's your tea ready? Frosty usually has it about six. No? Who? Frosty. Father Frost. Oh, wow. Frosty. Brilliant. <laughs> what do you call your fella? Who, Ted? Yeah. Oh, just Ted. But it's the way I say it, you know. He's an awful idiot, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which one do you prefer? Oasis or Blur? Blur. What? Oasis. I, I mean Oasis. <laughs> I'll be in the middle! <laughs> ah, there you are. You wouldn't believe the day I had. You wouldn't. God, I met the rudest couple, and that fella Benson, with his bloody whistle blowing it all the time. Somebody should take it off him and... Anyway, where did you go off to? Oh, I went off with uh, Father Damo Lennon. He's over with Frosty. Who? Eh, uh, Father Frost. <laughs> oh, yes. Father Frost. He said they might come over for a bit of a holiday. Father Damo was great. Dude, why are you walking like that? Like what, Ted? Like a crab. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Ted. <laughs> Dougal, what's that? What? This? Oh, nothing. Dougal, it's an earring. All right, it is all right, yeah. <laughs> Dougal, what's got into you? You can't go around wearing an earring. Ah, no, Ted. All the young priests are wearing them. Father Demo has one. Oh, I see. And did Father Demo give you the idea? Yeah, he's great. What next? I suppose he'll be giving you crack cocaine or something. Crack cocaine? Ah, come on, Ted. <sighs> <laughs> well, you'll have to take it out. Look, Ted, you don't know what's going on with the young people. Out. Oh, all right. But I should be allowed to do what I want, Ted. I am nearly 26, you know. You still treat me like I was 24. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dugan. I'll start treating you like a 26-year-old when you start acting like a 26-year-old. Anyway, it's time for your bath. A bath? Oh, no! <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. They really are making too big a deal of this. And look, 
A special pull-out supplement on whistles. <laughs> I don't know. Dougal, <clears throat> aren't you uh, going to introduce me to your friend? Oh, this is uh, Father Damo. How are you? Hello, Father. Playing the old computer game there? <laughs> Father Frost said if you don't come home now, he'll come down and get you. Yeah, tell him that's fine. I don't care what he does. It's not the boss of me. Right. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going. Tell him I'm going. I'll see you, Dougal. Dougal, mind this for me. Oh, yeah, right. I get them off you later. Frosty hates me smoking. OK, Demo. You praying, yeah? No, no, they're, uh, they're, they're Ted's. <laughs> See ya, right? See ya. <laughs> Dougal! Oh, God, what's he want now? <laughs> Richard, where are you going? Dougal, I am not Richard Whiteley. <laughs> You're back to sleep. You're dreaming. <sighs> Consonant. <laughs> Put your clothes back on, Carol. I can't concentrate. <laughs> Dougal, is there anything on your mind? <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Is there anything you want to tell me about? Uh, something bothering you in some way? Like what, Ted? Have you done anything you might be embarrassed about? Uh, have you done anything bad recently? Anything wrong? Wrong? Yes, Dougal, wrong. You remember right and wrong, the difference between the two. Page one of How to Be a Catholic. <laughs> Honestly, Dougal, this is very basic stuff. <laughs> What is wrong? Give me an example of something that's wrong. Just, just give me a second, Ted. I, uh, I... Arson. There's one. Murder. Swearing. Swearing. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, um, uh, <laughs> lying. Well done, Dougal. Yes. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Dougal, are you all right? I'm fine, Ted. I, I just need to sit down. Sorry about that, Dougal. Probably push you a bit hard there. <laughs> no worries, Ted. <laughs> Dougal, something else that's wrong is, is stealing. What I'm trying to say is it's, it's wrong to steal. Stealing is just something you don't do. Right, except you. Yes, <laughs> what? But you're allowed to steal. What are you talking about? The money from that Lord's thing. Different thing altogether, Dougal. First of all, that money was just resting in my account before I moved it on. It was resting for a long time, Ted. McCullough. Jim said it was a priest who stole the whistle. All right, that'll be Ted. <laughs> what? Do you remember, Ted? You were talking about stealing something and you showed me the whistle. You put it in your top pocket there. <laughs> no, Dougal. No, it is Ted. Go, try your top pocket there. Go on, seriously now. I bet you it's in there. In fact, I'm sure it is. Give it a go. <laughs> Just a bit more to your right there. Yes, Dougal. Thank you. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> well, there's an obvious explanation. <laughs> is there, Father? Oh, yes, of course there is. <laughs> what is it, Ted? <laughs> so I hear your babysitter got pregnant. visitors. Father Frost is here. Get off! Right. I believe there's a Mr. Benson who's had a whistle stolen. That's right. That's me. Well, I have the culprit here. What? Yeah, yeah. I stole it. So what? Uh, it's only a bleeding whistle. I saw this Egypt with a whistle on Tuesday. Then I heard Mr. Benson's whistle had gone missing. I asked this Egypt where he got it and he tried to put the blame on Father Maguire. Sorry about that, Father. Oh, well, it was my fault for stealing it. But you didn't steal it, Father. All right. <laughs> he hid it in a packet of cigarettes, apparently. Oh, well, that must be how we got a hold of it, because Father Damien gave me the cigarettes to mind. Oh. Ah, What's right. important is that we're back to normal. Well, you're right there, Ted. So have you uh, learnt anything from your experience?
No. <laughs> Carnegie Hall. Oh, Ted, here's one. Uh, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. What? <laughs> That's that old joke, isn't it? How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. Huh? <laughs> oh, I, I, I see. Um, you'd have to go to New York, Dougal. All right, yeah. Uh, Ted. <laughs> do you mind if I put on my record? No, go ahead. I've got Eurosong fever, Ted. Yeah? Oh, God, yeah. I love the Eurosong competition. I just can't wait. What time is it now? Half past one. Half one? And the competition is on in... May. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, you know they're looking for entries for this year's competition. Are they? Yeah. Dougal? Why don't we... Dougal! Ah, come on, Ted. Dougal! Imagine if we won. We'd be famous like, like Nelson Mandela and his mad wife. <laughs> No, Dougal, we don't have the time. Anyway, we'd have to write a song. That needs a certain type of person with a very special talent. Cole Porter, George and Irene Gershwin, Chris de Berg. Not just any old Egypt can take up the art of songwriting just like that. OK, right. What do we write it about? How about a lovely horse? <laughs> OK, we'll call it My Lovely Horse. By Father Ted Crilly. And uh, Father Dougal Maguire. <laughs> and uh, Father Dougal Maguire. Right. Maybe we should do the music first. No, right, here we go. I like that. <laughs> was that all right? Yeah, it was a bit sad. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I'll write it down. Um, I think it was uh, an A minor. I think, I think, I think I have a lyric. Right, lyrics. Go ahead there, Dougal. What's it called again? <laughs> my lovely horse. Right, how about this? Um, my lovely horse, I want to hold you so tight. I want to rub my fingers through your tail and <laughs> love you all night. Dougal, 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 stop there. Uh, we want to keep out of the whole area of actually being in love with the horse. Oh, right. Right. It's more that we're friends with the horse, that we want to jump around with it and, you know, just have a good laugh with it. Right. What about something like, uh, take this lump of sugar, baby, you know you want it. But... <laughs> That'd be something like those rap fellas would write. Ready? Ready, Ted, let's do it. Dougal, <laughs> don't take it so seriously. It's, it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> Just play the f***ing note. <laughs> first one. No, not the f***ing first one. The f***ing first one's already f***ing down. <laughs> Just play the f***ing note you're f***ing playing earlier. I've been playing the f***ing first one. We have the f***ing first one. <laughs> Running through the field. Where are you going with your fetlocks blowing in the wind? I want to shower you with sugar lumps and ride you over fences. I want to polish your hooves every single day and bring you to the horse dentist. My lovely horse, you're a pony no more. Running around with a man on your back like a train in the night. Wait, wait, I can do this bit. Like a train in the. Nice. <laughs> well, um, what do you think in general? <laughs> Where are the bands now? Oh, God, Ted, it's a terrible story. <laughs> they all died in a plane crash, including everybody who was involved in the song, the, the studio engineers, the producer, <laughs> the manager... And to the people who own the publishing rights. Oh, yes. It's, that's terrible. Uh, uh, Dougal. <clears throat> yeah? Wouldn't it be nice to commemorate all those talented people by keeping their music alive? <laughs> what? Well, 
suppose we were to borrow that tune for My Lovely Horse. <clears throat> uh, it would help us out and it would uh, commemorate their memory at the same time. So we wouldn't just be stealing their tune? Oh, no, no. You'd have to be mad to jump to that conclusion. As I say, we'd just be celebrating their memory. Uh, secretly. <laughs> Incidentally, don't tell anyone. All oh, right. And I suppose if the song wins and we make any money out of it, we could give it to their relatives. Yeah. <laughs> we'll play that by ear. <laughs> And why didn't he want people to know he was a priest, Ted? Uh, I suppose people thought if you were a priest, you were a bit uncool, that you were a, a bit of a square. <laughs> and then we came along. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Dougal, get to sleep. Sweet dreams. We have to lose that sax solo. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. We're all thrilled, and uh, it's a bit of a novelty, I suppose, you know, what with us being priests. <laughs> uh, well, not exactly, because tonight there's a very similar act to yours, Fathers Dick Byrne and Father Cyril McDonough. Oh, God, I didn't think they'd make it this far. Flip! They'll win, Ted. We might as well give up now. <laughs> well, that's a very defeatist attitude, Dougal. Oh, actually, it is. Sorry about that, Ted. <laughs> We can't do the song. What's up with you, Ted? I just heard it in the lift. They're piping it in in there. I heard someone whistling it. Well, that's good, isn't it? Show us what a great song it is, Ted. No, 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 we ripped it off. It must be more famous than we thought. We found out. What do we do, Ted? Why did this have to happen to us? What do we ever do to deserve this? And now on to our next act. All the way from Craggy Island, could you please welcome Father Ted Crilly and Father Dougal Maguire. My lovely horse running through the fields. Where are you going with your fetlocks blowing in the wind? I want to shower you with sugar lumps and ride you over fences. Call it your hooves every single day and send you to the horse. Dentist, my lovely horse, you're a pony no more. Running around with the man on your back, like a train in the night, like a train in the. Hold on, I can get this. Night. <laughs> 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 God, Ben, I'm such an idiot. I put the shorts on my head. God almighty, Brendan, you really are a big fool. God, this, is, this is really top-notch stuff. <laughs> that Brendan's an idiot. <laughs> God, I know someone just like Ben. Big pickle. <laughs> There he is now, anyway. <laughs> He's great, isn't he? He is all right. Uh, does he have a name? No, I don't think so. Uh, the woman in the pet shop didn't mention one, anyway. <laughs> no, I don't know. How about Ted? That's a good name for a rabbit. No, I don't think that's a good idea, Dougal. You're forgetting I'm called Ted as well. 
I could call you Father Ted. No. <laughs> Seriously, Dougal, you'll have to come up with something a bit more original. Hello, fathers. Hello, Hello Mrs. Mrs. Doyle. <laughs> How about Mrs. Doyle? <laughs> all right. Wait, I've got one. You see the way he's got big floppy ears there flopping all over the place? Yeah. Well, why don't we call him Father Jack Hackett? <laughs> Perfect. Father Jack it is. Go on there. Go on, boy. Fetch. Go on. Oh. Come on now, Dougal. Get him into his cage. I don't want Bishop Brennan seeing him. Ah, Teddy might like him. No, he wouldn't like him. He doesn't like rabbits at all. Why not? It's a strange story. About ten years ago, he was in New York and he got trapped in a lift with about 20 rabbits for the whole night. They started nibbling his cape and everything. <laughs> How did they get in? I don't know. I suppose they must have burrowed in, you know, rabbits. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's your rabbit? Yeah. So where did this one come from? Uh, Ted, there's another one on Jack's head. <laughs> you make sure your rabbit doesn't get mixed up with these other lads. All right. Come on, Sampras. <laughs> what did you call him? Sampras, like Pete Sampras. Why? Well, you know, rabbits, tennis, you know that whole connection there. <laughs> All right. When... <laughs> What's wrong, Ted? Rabbits! Rabbits, where? Oh, wow. <laughs> where the hell did these ones come from? God, it's like a big rabbit rock festival. I suppose we just have to get used to it. Get used to it? We'll have to get them out of here before he arrives. I'll ring the pet shop. Uh, no, uh, Ted, it was a travelling pet shop. They won't be back till spring. <laughs> God. What are we going to do? Well, wait, now, 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 there is actually something we can do, Ted. If we, uh, now, let me see now. Just wait a second there. Uh, um, I know, I know, I've got it, Ted. What? Right, now, now, the way I see it is uh, if we, yeah. Uh, yeah, now, wait a second. Yeah. Um, what, what's the problem again? The rabbits! Yes, yes, Ted, yes, yes, sorry about that. I know exactly what to do. Why don't we give them to Father Larry Duff? You're right. He's always gone on about how we'd love to have a few rabbits running around the place. Do you know what this is like, Dougal? It's like some sort of plague, a big rabbit plague. I wonder if God is punishing us for something. Maybe it's because I, I said feck to Bishop Brennan. <laughs> God, if he'd send down a plague of rabbits just because you said feck to Bishop Brennan, imagine what he'll do when he finds out about all the money you stole from that charity. <laughs> Dougal, that money was just resting my account before I moved it on. Ted! No, it was strictly a non-profit-making well, subsidiary account. Ted, the bunnies are gone. Where's the gold? Come on, Evan. Get out of it. Come on, Father. No, thanks. No, I've got ten pounds riding on that little beauty over there. Come on, Eamon. Come on, Eamon. Come on, Eamon. No. Come on, fella. You can have a go yourself if you want. No, no, Tom. Honestly, yeah, it's a bit cruel. I could run him down in me van. <laughs> Dougal, I, I think we'd better be off. What's the problem there, Ted? I mean, not that can kill it off, Ed. Sorry about that, Tom. Uh, Fick it. Fick it, anyway. Run, Dougal. Run quite fast. Quite fast. <laughs> I'm sure it won't happen again. It better not. <laughs> Priests? Where did you put them, Dougal? The bunnies? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere really safe, Ted. <laughs> where, where would that be? Guess. It's almost like the type of place you wouldn't even think of. <laughs> God, uh, I don't know. Oh, that small room behind the kitchen. The coal cellar. I've got it. The shed. No, it's not the shed. Come on, Ted, think about it. Where's the last place you'd think I'd put them? <laughs> I suppose the last place I'd think you'd, you'd put them would be, um... would actually be... Bishop Brennan's room. Bingo! <laughs> think about it, Ted. I put the bunnies in the last place he'd ever expect to find them, in his own room. He'd never look there. <laughs> Where are they? They're not in there. Are they not? No, that is a completely rabbit-free area. Well, I definitely put them in there, Ted. Wait a minute, Jack's room. Maybe they smelled them and had to see him one last time. <laughs> I think you might be putting that in a slightly over-romantic way, Dougal, but good guess. Come on. 
God, Dougal, you're right. There's loads of them here. How did they get in? They must have burrowed in. You know rabbits. <laughs> well, we'll have to do it in shifts. Get them out of the house and as far away as possible. Why can't we just leave them here? Because, Dougal, my nerves are shot. I won't be able to relax until the only rabbit left is the one sitting in your head working the controls. <laughs> Ted, there's loads more in here. Look at this one. Doesn't he look like that fella, um, Harvey Keitel? <laughs> Harvey Keitel? God, Dougal, how could a rabbit look like... God almighty! Spitting image of him. <laughs>